Please take me off the camera. Please take me off the camera. Let's put your right back on I made camera. It. Just did the after effects. All right, so let's take you out. A lot to watch once again. It feels like no rest for the weary. Another week we need to be on guard. Well, coming up on the show, we're going in depth, sweetheart, oh, as they is. say. Well, right now the battle continues in eastern Tennessee to get a raging wildfire under control. Chief environmental correspondent Dave Malkoff takes us to the ground to show us the work to save lives and livelihoods. Lady, that was awesome, right? <laughs> Straight ahead on weather and around a stormy weekend ahead for you spring breakers. Sorry to central part of the state of Florida. So we look at places like Sarasota yesterday, by the way, when Mike said Siesta Key, I got so excited because I was like, Mike watches Siesta Key. And so then we talked about the show and everything. He, he's going to he's like, I don't know, Siesta Key, but I watch it. Uh, temperatures in the upper 80s, West Palm Beach, 83 in Naples, obviously a little cooler up farther to the north where we have kept a little bit more cloud cover around where we've got that front already moving through too. dew points in Tallahassee 42, but obviously much more juicy across sections of central and south Florida. Now down into the Miami area, we're dry, but between Tampa and Miami, you can see our hung up front, our rain showers, our thunderstorms, and where we've also got, you know, that uh, moist, unstable air. So we're going to be watching for those thunderstorm chances here moving forward. How about north of Fort Pierce right now, south of Melbourne? That's where you've got the downpours and they are downpours, not going to make it easy easy for you as you out there driving around on the roadways. We've got thunderstorms uh, also bringing plenty of lightning. So when thunder roars, go indoors. You know the deal. West Melbourne, a report of flooding six to 12 inches deep along the roadway there. And at Melbourne Airport, six inches of water across uh, Apollo Boulevard. So again, we've seen already some road flooding in some of these communities thanks to these very, very healthy and bountiful downpours. When we look at our future radar, where is that rain going through the afternoon and into the evening? We'll see those scattered showers, thunderstorms, especially persistent in the East Coast later today. But look what happens overnight and through the day tomorrow. Another round of showers and thunderstorms really from north to south, and that could bring yet another opportunity for severe storms. Mike, looking at Orlando to Fort Myers, Siesta Key, not quite as in the zone. Counting, can you believe it? We will celebrate our 40th anniversary on May 2nd this year. It's a big deal. So we hope you uh, stay with us here leading up to the big celebration. Uh, we've got some more clips. We've got some historic storms, historic events, historic bloopers. We've got it all to share with you. There's some hijinks you're going to see, yeah. so it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, we know that this month has, uh, March I should say, is now April. March was one heck of a month. It really all was. All kinds of severe weather from beginning to end. Yeah, the start of the month, uh, the first weekend, was very active and then we ended the month with really yep. two weeks in a row of active of severe reports. weather so uh, you know they say march in like a lion out like a lamb not the case this year no. in like a lion and out like a lion you know you take a look at some of the damage that we saw too right and how about an early march deadly tornado outbreak rips through central iowa killed seven people how, how about some of the damage here in winterset this town just outside of des moines the national weather service rated this and ef4 winds were 170 miles an hour yeah, and it was the first EF4 in the state since 2013. So yeah. for years it had been since they'd had a tornado that strong. Now, Iowa, there is that storm as it made its way through. Again, this was the early part of the month, but you can see the uh, very, very noticeable supercell thunderstorms that did bring that uh, EF4. That's getting up into really high territory, and unfortunately, yeah. uh, we saw in that damage video you know, what it did. A lot of times, you know, a place like Iowa is kind of on the fringe, generally historically, mm -hmm. where we would see, you know, some big time March tornado outbreaks. Usually they're a little bit farther south, but they got us this time. Now, last week, it was a string of dangerous storms in the south. And how about some dramatic images here showing when the tornado came through here in Jacksboro, Texas. This is when it happened at the uh, gym, the, the gym, high school. The high school, yeah. I mean, we had some really wild uh, surveillance from outside of the football field, here mm -hmm. inside the gymnasium, and also just in the school. But the gymnasium... At a time, you could see everything being whipped around, like the insulation. Uh, you could see the rotation, the was, movement of it that. Was it was insane. crazy. It Luckily, really was. nobody was in there, though. Those Thank big goodness. structures not where you want to be during a tornado. The storm just came ripping through, you know, the Jacksboro area. Hit the high school, hit the elementary school, hit a lot of communities, unfortunately. Hit a lot of states, from Texas all the way to the Carolinas. We had tornadoes even up in Ohio. Yeah, it was a, an active week. Unfortunately, when we look at the footprint from March 21st to 23rd, we'll show you 
earlier this week's footprint not that different. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, New Orleans and Texas or Araby, those were the uh, communities that really took the headliners, but there was still much more in the way of active weather. Yeah, so then St. Bernard Parish, and we saw what happened here. This happened on March 23rd, and this was the east side yep. of New Orleans. Hit very, very hard. Um, a lot of these places are more used to hurricanes. They are severe weather, right? And we know that one person was killed here, but the damage is pretty extensive here. These tight knit communities, are, these cluster homes, mm -hmm. is really, really tough to see the damage we had here. Yeah, we had a lot of our crews out there. This was an uh, EF3 in the community of Araby. Now the strongest tornado for Metro New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, just beating one from back in 2017. So as you mentioned, yeah, you hurricanes more usual. Right in there is New Orleans, yeah. and it was right to the east side of New Orleans yeah. where that tornado came tearing through. And there were actually one uh, that came through <laughs> this past week, too. Yeah. Almost, we, I mean, only 100 yards from where that tornado was. It, it again, has yeah. been a wild and very repetitive end very of the so. month. Again, there are the New Orleans tornadoes uh, from the 2017 one compared to this one. 10 miles an hour stronger with the wind speed. So 160 miles an hour now mm -hmm. gives this one the top spot. Unbelievable, right? And then this week, another string of really dangerous storms across the south. How about the damage that we saw in Jackson, Mississippi, after Wednesday's severe event? Homes where the second stories were ripped off. Look at some of the, you know, aluminum or roofing material that's just wrapped around poles here, and a lot of cleanup, of course. A lot of cleanup needs to be done, and so a lot of people are also looking at, you know, the early April risk and seeing it's a lot of the same areas that we've been dealing with the storms this week last week. So what's in store for next week? Well, unfortunately, it does look like next week will encompass a lot of these areas. Now, again, climatologically speaking, it makes sense, but boy, we could use a break. We'd like to be able to catch yeah. our breath here for just a second, right? But knowing the risk ahead of time hopefully can put you at ease a little bit here because if you're doing the right things, you're paying attention to whether you have a safe place picked out, you can be in really good shape here. You take a look at the European model. Some heavy rains also forecast here. Same with the GFS model. So flooding may go hand in hand with the storm threat next week. Yeah, you know, we've seen some localized flooding issues today in Florida, but with more heavy rain coming to areas that were already drenched over mm -hmm. the last few weeks, I'd be watching parts of Louisiana, Alabama, Alabama, Mississippi, over to Georgia as well. Yeah, we need some time to dry out, no question. We come back here on the Weather Channel, a look at your forecast for the weekend and a sneak peek at what forecast holds for next week. And the snow, actually snow falling today. This is not a joke, although you're like, yeah, April 1st. It's, it's not nearly late enough for us to totally discount any opportunities for snow. So we've got the snow back into Buffalo. We've got snow into parts of North Country, New York, even as far south as the mountains of West Virginia. So getting down into the southern part of the state, parts of Western Maryland, seeing some snow. So some of the areas that we're watching for storms yesterday, now getting in on wintry weather. Same for eastern parts of Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Now this could cause you some trouble on the roads in terms of snow squalls. Be ready for bursts of very heavy snow. Temperatures have been in the upper 30s, so I'm not in anticipating, you know, the roads to get crazy slippery, but you get all that snow coming down very, very quickly, and that's going to reduce visibilities, and that can lead to the accidents like what we saw earlier this week. You can see those snow showers, those bands of snow showers will continue even into Saturday morning. I think by late Saturday morning, things are beginning to quiet down across the area, but if you're up early in a place like Syracuse, still could see some snow. How about Grand Rapids? You're sitting at 33 with snow showers, Detroit 38 with clouds, Alpena in the upper 30s. Next clipper coming in through the weekend going to offer snow to the Great Lakes region. So get ready for more winter weather opportunities if you are in parts of Wisconsin or Minnesota or Iowa or northern Illinois. Another round of rain and snow headed your way. So we time it out for you there as we get into the late part of tonight. We've got a little wintry mix possible around Minneapolis, Des Moines. It's just rain, but that area of snow overspreads portions of Iowa and Wisconsin, even northern Illinois as we move into Saturday morning, moving over into lower Michigan by Saturday afternoon. So places like Grand Rapids seeing snow or a rain snow mix for Detroit. I think you'll see some rain snow showers mixed together, ending with a few snowflakes by Sunday morning. Things are quiet across much of the Great Lakes with the exception of the eastern ones. That's right. More snow showers headed your way into sections of New York and PA. Not how we want to start our. It seems like his reputation precedes him yeah. when it comes to hurricanes, right? But it makes I, sense. I'm kind of not welcome in parts of Florida during the hurricane True. season oh, either. I'm sure if yeah. people see you, they're like, 
wait a second, yeah. same thing. Like, why <laughs> are you here? Why are you near my home? Exactly. So, but one of the more fun promos yeah. to air here on the Weather Channel, part of our uh, 40 days of 40 years celebration here, May 2nd, our official 40th anniversary here on the wow. Weather Channel. Yeah, pretty wild stuff. We've got a lot of fun planned, so I hope you'll stay tuned for all the, the enjoyable moments. I think there's even some old school Dr. Nab in there. Yeah, there's some home movies of me watching Weather Channel, watching the tropical update back in the day <laughs> oh, that are 40 years I old. I cannot wait to see I that. bet. Well, you know, we've been following a lot of weather stories even up to this week. And earlier this week, something that really made headlines was this accident. People just narrowly escaping some, some significant injuries or, or worse there, right? But raises the question, how do we alert drivers in particular of a pending danger like this? Because inherently we're in our cars, it's hard for us to get the warnings. So many of us are concerned about being a distracted driver these days, right? We're kind of ignoring our phones in the car. And that, that's what we're getting the warning, right? Yeah. Right. And I feel like technology can really be part of the solution here, such that, you know, if on, on many smartphones now, when you route yourself, it will tell you, you've just routed yourself into an area that's under some kind of weather warning. Mm -hmm. And so I, w I could think that for some folks, that when you're driving along, if you are headed toward or your route takes you through a snow squall warning, it can reroute you around it and you know, go to the next exit. And that could be part of the solution. It makes sense. You know, I think one of the pitfalls of this is sometimes you look wall warnings are short fused like tornado warnings, like severe thunderstorm warnings or flash flood warnings. I think it would help to get people in the right mindset ahead of time to issue a commensurate watch. Like you have tornado watch mm -hmm. and severe thunderstorm watch. Why not snow squall watch? Will that so keep that, people off the road though? No, but it might cause them to be more alert and be anticipating something that could be said is just a, a you know a, a state trooper or another police officer with lights on on the side of the road that'll get everybody slowing down because otherwise how do you without putting up signs every mile or something but maybe dispatching folks when these watches would be well, issued. One thing I also wonder is you know we have a lot of susceptible roadways to lake effect events yeah. in particular mm -hmm. right this is where we get a lot of our snow yeah. squall warnings. Can we start implementing, you know, the gate system? They have this yep. on, on a lot of the interstates and the plains, right, where they're very susceptible to blizzard conditions. Can we preemptively close highways for periods of time where we can avoid something like this? I think, yeah. uh, to me, I think about it just kind of logically big picture. If you had closed this highway, mm -hmm. six people would still be alive today, right? right? Um, and yeah, do you, we, you, don't, you close it for six hours, yeah. right? and, there's hours often, and then you open it back up. Yeah, and there's often objections to preemptively closing right. roads, but would we rather do that or have a big accident pile up end up closing the road? Either way, right. a lot of people have to get diverted and wait. Let's do it without people getting hurt. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's a big choice because a lot of these were trucks, so you see the argument of, hey, yeah. things need to get places, but, but ultimately be a better way. it's safety. There's got to be a safer yeah, way. Absolutely. Safer way. All right, we got much more.